Hello and welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to talk about Glob, which is a standard Python module you can use to retrieve or locate files or search inside folders for specific files. For example, you can search for all the files in a folder. You can search for CSV files and grab them or grab all the text files. Or you can specify that I want only the text files which have numbers in their names or do not have numbers in their names or they have these words or those letters. So that is why we are going to use Glob. In their documentation, Glob has been defined as a Unix style path name pattern expansion. That's quite a fancy name. Now, let's see how it works. I have imported pandas as pd because I'm going to work also with csvs down uh, below. And then I've imported os because I'm going to grab the modification date of some file or the size of them or the creation date of those files and sort them out. But more importantly, I've imported glob. It's a standard Python module, so you don't need to install these two. Now, I have a folder called test folder inside the same directory as my Jupyter Notebook. So I'm in creating this variable files and I'm using the glob module. And from that glob, I'm using this method glob. And I am passing in the name of that folder forward slash asterisk, meaning grab me everything. Asterisk is a pattern meaning everything there is inside that folder. Now if I print this file, you can see I have these text files, CSV files and a subfolder. Now we'll see how we can work with these text files or CSV files later. But for now let's just locate and retrieve. So now let's imagine that I want to grab all the CSV files within a folder. I use the same method that I just described, glob.glob, the path, forward slash, asterisk, but this time followed by dot CSV, meaning as long as the file has the extension CSV, doesn't matter how many characters or letters or numbers there are before that. So grab me all the CSV files. If you want to grab all the text files inside a folder, asterisk.txt. What if you want to specify that I want files which end in 1 and 2 or 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever range. So you mention asterisk means everything which is followed by 1 to 2, up to 2. This is a range before the dot text. So I'm going to print all of these and I will see. So here the first one, all the CSVs that you can see. The second one, we have all the texts here. And the third one, we have this pattern. Whatever character or word or number there is, as long as it ends in one or two, and it's a text file, grab me that. Look at this one, A1, right? So one. Then we have test one. Again, it has one in it. Test two, one in it, and all of them are texts. Perfect. Now, if you want to exclude those files which end in one to two, this range, you can simply add an exclamation mark. Remember, you should put this, this range inside a bracket. So whatever name or word there is, it should not end in one to two. And it should be a text, of course. And it grabbed me this 13.txt because 13 ends in 3. Test 3.txt, it ends in 3. Now, next we have this pattern of question mark, meaning one character, only one. So it should be something like, for example, let's see, I've mentioned that one character followed by a number from 1 to 9. And you can see here we have it 13. So there is one character and then there is this number. Here we have A, one character, and then there is this number. Now, next we have another range. So again, the same folder inside brackets, I have set only the ones 
that start because this is the beginning of our pattern that starts with a letter from C to Z, C to Z, lower or uppercase. As long as it starts with one of these letters and then followed by whatever number of characters or words there are is fine, but it should end in a number from one to nine. So let's see what we got here. So we have test one because T it starts is between this range and doesn't matter it is and then in the end we should have a number. So you see all these and then A1 is not included because it doesn't follow this pattern. Or 13 also is not included because it starts with one. Whereas we've mentioned it should start with a letter. And lastly, there's this pattern. If you want to look not just inside this folder, but also all the files in subfolders, you should specify the path followed by um, this uh, forward slash and double asterisk, meaning whatever subfolders. And then we mention if you want to text files. But at the same time, you should mention recursive, you should set recursive to true, meaning get me all these text files, not just in the subfolders, but also in the same folder. That is, give me all the text files inside the folder and the subfolders, as you can see here. So that is it for the patterns. Now, working with texts, let's say we have these texts and I want to print all of them, or I don't know, save them inside the list maybe. So what I can do, I'm going to set a path. As you can see here, I'm checking for all the text also inside the subfolders using this double asterisk. And just as before, I'm setting glob, dot glob and setting the path and putting setting the recursive to true to retrieve all the text files. And now I'm going to loop through these files so for file in files, remember these are files, right? So for file in files, this would be file, this would be file. I'm going to open that file in the reading mode as F and I'm going to set the contents of that file, f.read method. I'm going to read that file and set it to contents variable. This is now a string of all the contents of that file. And I'm going to print those contents and you can see here, I have Australia, I have Japan, Brazil, Egypt, and Canada. So these five texts. Alternatively, I could also save them inside a list maybe. Now, working with CSV files and pandas, this is also fun. So again, I'm grabbing all the CSV files inside the folder, and you can see these are the ones. Now I want to concatenate them, that is to mix them, to combine them together. These are separate for CSP files, but remember, they all have the same uh, columns. So now I'm creating an empty data frame in pandas by pd.dataframe. If you don't know what that is, you can simply um, watch some of my other YouTube videos on pandas. And once I have created a data frame, it's empty. So I'm going to loop through these and add them one by one to this data frame. So I'm going to put this in a temporary data frame and then add it to this data frame. So for filing files, for every file, I'm going to create a temporary data frame by reading that CSV file, that file, which is the single file. This one, for example, is going to be a temporary data frame. Now I'm going to set this data frame to pd.concat, that is concatenate or combine. I'm going to combine this data frame, which is empty for now, with the new temporary data frame, which is this one. And now our DF would have this one in it. And then it goes up again and it checks for this, puts in a temporary data frame, then adds this to a, the old data frame. And now we have two and then do, does it the same. And then we have three of them in one data frame. Now, if I look for it, I should run it first and now here you can see I have these this is like fake data generation and um, 
can see the, the index is a bit weird because these are all three different data, data frames or CSV files. So I can reset the index. And that is how I do this. DF reset the index. And you can see now I have reset the index here. It's fine, but I have this column which I should remove. So what I would do is I comment this out and I uncomment this. I'm going to drop this index and access one means it's the column. So now everything looks good. Now the last section is about sorting these files. So we can use a sorted function, glob.glob, and I'm going to go through all these subfolders and sort them out based on names. So you can see we have A, T1, Test2, and all that. If I want to sort them based on the modification time, I can again use the sorted function but this time I set a key that is it should sort them based on what OS that the module that's why we imported the module os.path.getm time modification time so I'm going to sort them based on the modification time and you can see this is how they were uh, modified based on the, the modification time and the last one based on size Again, sorted uh, function. We have this, and the key is going to be os.path.getSize. So it's going to be sorted based on size. Well, that was it. That was all you need to know uh, about Glob, which is a great module. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please leave a like or just leave a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and listening.